All right, this video is going to introduce us to some fundamental trigonometric identities. All right, so the first ones we're going to talk about are what's called the reciprocal identities. We already talked about how sine theta and cosecant theta, by their definitions, they're defined to be reciprocals of each other. Same with cosine and secant and tangent and cotangent. Well, we can also write it this way. The sine of theta is equal to 1 over the cosecant of theta because they're reciprocals of each other, right? So cosine theta has to equal 1 over secant theta, and tangent theta, theta has to equal 1 over cotangent theta. Right? Okay, which also means, then, that we can say it the other way. Cosecant theta is the same thing as 1 divided by sine theta. And secant theta is 1 over cosine theta, and cotangent is 1 over tangent theta. All right, so these are the, the reciprocals of each other. You just need to know that sine and, sine and cosecant are reciprocals of each other. Cosine and secant are reciprocals of each other. And tangent and cotangent are reciprocals of each other. Thus, if we have something, say, like, all right, if we know the cosine of theta is 2 thirds, then the secant of theta has to be 3 halves. Follow me? Now let's look at the following. Suppose we have sine theta over cosine theta. Well, sine theta is defined to be y over r, right, from the last video. Cosine theta is x over r. All right, so you have y over r divided by x over r. Well, what does that go to? That just goes to y over x. Everybody see that? And that, y over x, was defined to be tangent of theta. Everybody with me? Remember using our little triangle. There's x. Okay, see a little triangle. There's your theta. Okay, so that was x, that was y, and that was r. Remember from the previous video. Okay, so um, tangent theta can be written as the sine of theta divided by cosine theta, and therefore cotangent theta, being the reciprocal of tangent, cotangent theta is cosine theta divided by sine theta. So they, these are called the quotient identities. Tangent theta is the same thing as sine theta divided by cosine theta, and cotangent theta is the same thing as cosine theta divided by sine theta. You just need to know that tangent theta can be written as sine over cosine, and cotangent can be written as cosine over sine. We need to know those identities. So now we've got some notation. All right, we're going to write this the following way. Sine, you read this as sine squared of theta. All right, that's how you read this. It means all of sine theta, whatever that is, squared. So that means sine theta times sine theta. It does not mean sine theta squared. There's a huge difference between, these, between this notation and this notation. Here we're just squaring the angle theta and then taking the sine of it. Whereas here, we're taking the sine of your angle, getting that number, and then squaring that number. So very important that we understand what this, these notations mean. So when we write sine squared of theta, it means the sine of theta, whatever that number is, and then we're going to square it. Same with, the, same with the other trig functions, cosine and tangent and all those. Okay? That leads us to the following. All right, so there's your triangle again. Now, since we have a right triangle, we know that x squared plus y squared has to equal r squared, right? Okay, so if we divide everything by r squared, you would have x squared over r squared plus y squared over r squared equals 1. I'm leading you somewhere, okay? Well, then that's the same thing as x over r squared plus y over r squared equals 1. And x over r is defined to be cosine, right? So we have cosine theta squared. y over r is defined to be sine of theta squared equals 1. Everybody see that? This is another identity. These are called the Pythagorean identities. So cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. That's the most important identity you're going to learn in this class. So make sure you never ever forget that the cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, that always goes to the number 1. Right? We just proved it in the previous, in the previous slide. Okay? Now, having cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1, we can actually derive two other Pythagorean identities. If you were to take this equation right here and divide everything by cosine squared, everybody with me? If we divide everything by cosine squared, we would get 1 
plus, you'd have sine squared divided by cosine squared, which would be tangent squared, and then 1 divided by cosine squared, which would be secant squared theta. And you get this new identity. 1 plus tangent squared theta, that is the same thing as just secant squared theta. Okay, one more. Instead of dividing both sides by cosine squared, let's divide both sides by sine squared. So when we do that, we have cosine squared divided by sine squared, which gives us cotangent squared theta. Sine squared theta divided by sine squared theta is 1. And 1 divided by sine squared theta is cosecant squared theta. And these are what's called the three Pythagorean identities. However, you really only need to know one of them, right? Because if you know this first one, the cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1, you can always derive the other two fairly fast. All right, so here's an example of how we can, we can use these. Find cosine theta if cosecant theta is negative 4 and theta is in quadrant 3. Right? That's what this means here. Theta is in quadrant 3. All right, so we know that since cosecant of theta is negative 4, what does that mean? That means then that sine theta is equal to negative 1 fourth because they're reciprocals of each other, right? I'm trying to get to sine because we're looking for cosine here, right? Well, we also know that cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. Well, we know what sine theta is. We can plug that in there. So cosine squared theta plus negative 1 fourth squared equals 1. Everybody see what we just did? We replaced the sine theta with what it is. It's negative 1 fourth. So then we have cosine squared theta plus 1 sixteenth is equal to 1. And that means then that the cosine squared theta is equal to subtract 1 sixteenth from both sides and you get 15 sixteenths. So cosine theta is plus or minus the square root of 15 sixteenths, which is the square root of 15 over 4. Okay, but since theta is in quadrant 3, cosine theta has to equal what? Right, we're in quadrant 3. So picture your x and y axis. Here's quadrant 3. So you're down here somewhere. Your angle's theta, like such. All right, so cosine, is it positive or negative down here in quadrant 3? Well, remember cosine's the x over r thing, right? Well, x is negative. Right, r is always a positive number, so x is negative. So you're down here in quadrant 3, cosine is negative. So it's negative, the square root of 15, over 4. And that's the value of the cosine of your angle. All right, that's it for the fundamental identities. There will be many, many more identities uh, as, you, as you move along through your trigonometry course. All right, study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.